believe Connie's doing this. What, did you talk to her about it? Oh, she doesn't want to talk. She doesn't want to hear anybody make sense about it. That's my sister. What has your sister done now? <sighs> Getting married. Boom! Mm. She's finally marrying that Ronald McGonnell guy. Donald McGonnell. Right. That's the guy at your sister's barbecue who kept asking me if I'd like fries with that. Oh, you're hilarious, Miles. <sighs> I know. Sometimes I am. So why don't you like, uh, the Donald? Well, let's just say I think she can do a whole lot better. I mean, she broke up with the guy last weekend for like the tenth time. And the next thing I hear, she she's getting married to him next weekend. What is You're that? Out of your mind. Michael owns him. Owns him. MJ pulls up. He fakes the pivots right. And he shoots! Don't be bringing that weak stuff in here, baby. By the way, that is what Kobe's gonna do to Michael tomorrow night. We'll see. And when I say we'll see, I mean this could be the last time they play against each other. Maybe ever. We're gonna be there, baby. You guys did not get tickets to the Wizards-Lakers game. Sixth row, mid-court. George, Bush would have a hard time getting tickets that good. Who do you know? Perhaps you just mentioned him. You didn't get tickets from the... Bobby, are you still in contact with Hakeem Kadir? I am. Good. Fill me in. Through one of my informants, we learn that Hakeem is looking to buy some explosives. He now thinks that I'm a dealer and that he's about to make said deal. In which case, I shall deliver to him the bad news that, in fact, I'm not a dealer and that he's just committed a felony. What kind of stuff is he looking for? Um, plastic explosives, C4. I think we'd all better take a look at this. Thomas. See if you can tell what these guys are saying. Right, oh, well, the uh, bloke on the left is my man, Hakeem. When was this taken? Five days ago. Pause a minute. Interpol got this footage yesterday from an informant. The man handing the suitcase to Hakim is Sergei Slovakov, a Chechen black market arms dealer. What we really want to know is what's in the suitcase. Now, right here, Thomas, I really need to know what he's saying. Go ahead. Can you go in tighter, Tara? It's kind of dark. But it looked like he said, highest quality, pure grade something. I'm pretty sure about that. I didn't get that word. Can you want it again, Tara? Draw or straw something. Sorry, one more time, even tighter. Maybe. Strontium. Strontium? Strontium? Yeah, I think that's it. Strontium. You've just confirmed what we feared. Intelligence got wind that some strontium fell into the wrong hands. We hoped it wasn't true, but it looks like it was. What is strontium? It's one of the most deadly radioactive components around for assembling a dirty bomb. We're not talking about a nuclear weapon here, are we? Not in the way you're thinking. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. When a highly radioactive material like strontium is combined with a conventional explosive like C4, that's a dirty bomb. The explosion propels the radioactive material over a wide area, rendering it uninhabitable for 50 years or more. Not to mention that thousands of people, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people, would be exposed to deadly doses of radiation. That's definitely a bad thing. Well, uh, with the team in this country looking to buy explosives, I'd say that we've got to think that he's planning on bringing the strontium here. If he hasn't already. Well, if he hasn't, we have to keep it out. If he has, we have to find it. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders That'll be all right Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes who I am I am Rosemary's granddaughter Sitting in the hand of my father And when the day is done 
show you the magnitude of what we're dealing with. If a dirty bomb containing strontium was placed somewhere near Grant's statue and the prevailing winds were blowing at 15 miles per hour, the damage would be... Well, you can see for yourself. The dark red signifies the damage done by the initial explosion. The purple depicts the spread of the strontium. The Supreme Court, the Library of Congress, and the Capitol Building would all have been rendered uninhabitable. And every person in the vicinity of the blast would have been killed by the initial explosion. So, if I were a crate of strontium, what route might I take to get into the country? And all we know is that it was in Pakistan five days ago. Interpol believes it may have shipped through Turkey. Well, if we're talking nuclear radiation, why don't we just follow the trail of dead bodies that tend to glow in the dark? As long as it's encased in a thick container of lead, it should be pretty safe. But if that shielding is missing or broken, Lucy's right. Someone standing nearby would receive a fatal dose of radiation within moments. Let's start with what we know. Set up a meeting with Hakeem. The sooner we get him into interrogation, the better. Does Hakeem have the expertise to put together a dirty bomb? There's nothing in his profile that indicates he's a bomb maker. My guess is he's just the middleman. And that's the good news. It's not easy to put one of these things together. Even if you have all the ingredients, you're still going to need an expert to help them. I'll bring in the other agencies and get the alert out within the bureau. Nobody goes home until we put this thing to bed. This is not only our top priority, it is our only priority. Looking sharp, Sparky. Anyone ever tell you blue is a good color on you? Hey, it pays the bills. How's the business, Miles? Come on, break. The games begin. The team is right on time. Do you have it? C4 some awfully powerful stuff, mate. But I can get you as much as you want. I need to make the purchase as soon as possible. Love it when a plan comes together. Hey, just out of curiosity, you mind telling me what you want it for? Not your business. Oh, I don't. Just thought I'd ask. Hope you might save me some time later. Save you time? What does that mean? Well, then we can skip the interrogation part. Sorry, Hakeem, but you're in a bit of a bind, mate. I need you to come with me now. Gentlemen, Hakeem, Hakeem, say good day to the FBI. Nice to meet you. I've done nothing wrong. I merely came to America to conduct some business, and I'm accosted by the authorities. Yeah, well. We have an unimpeachable witness, me, who says you tried to buy explosives from an FBI agent. I believe even in America it's not against the law to use explosives to blast away tree stumps. Well, actually it can be, if there's still a tree attached to it. It definitely is if somebody's sitting in that tree. You were in Pakistan a few days ago. Maybe we could go easy on you if you tell us what business you were conducting there. I have many business associates all over the world. You'll have to be a bit more specific than that. Righto. A man named Sergei Slovakov gave you a suitcase. We want to know what was in it and where it is now. I don't know what you're referring to. I think you do. And we're going to find it with or without your help. Okay. You're not walking out of here anytime soon, mate. You might want to reconsider your options. I want a lawyer. Found something that might be of interest. Follow up on Hakeem's cell phone records show he called a shipping office at the Baltimore docks yesterday. When I called it, they said a man with a Middle Eastern accent had called asking whether a shipment had come in yet. Got an address? Thought you'd never ask. The crate you're talking about was picked up yesterday, late afternoon. Was the recipient Hakeem Kadir? No. Nope. It's uh, Mr. T. Banks. Do you remember what he looks like? Black kid. Young, 18, 19, maybe. Definitely not Hakeem. Oh, so you got a good look at him then? Oh, he's standing just as close to me as you are right now. I probably wouldn't forget your face either. <sighs> Could we get you to help us with one more thing? For you? Anything, sweetie? Close, but the eyes aren't quite right. 
Maybe they were more oval. Well, that's more like it. That actually looks quite a bit like them. Tara, see if you can match this image and the name Banks, first initial T, with any of the local prisons, gangs, and arrests made within the last year. That's him. Terrell Banks. Evelyn, thank you very, very much. Mm. Anytime. I'll walk you out. Terrell's got a nice little rap sheet going for him. Assault and armed robbery seem to be his specialties. Gang affiliation, the apostles. Terrell's got a younger brother, Marcus, also an apostle. That's your old buddy Curtis Safford's gang. You're a friend with the head of the gang? Curtis Sanford was one of my first busts. Bond like that is special. He was just a punk kid then, but now he's management. Might be time to renew old acquaintances. Can you see if the DC cops have whereabouts on Curtis? In the meantime, I'm gonna check this address on Terrell. Banks? Yeah. Oh, you. What's going on, man? It's good. You signed a suitcase? No. Terrell, we're with the FBI. What did you do with the suitcase you picked up at the docks? <coughs> Let's get the paramedics up here. Let's get this guy to a hospital. There's no suitcase here. He's in pretty bad shape. He's been exposed to a very high dose of radiation. Why didn't that show up on any of our handheld monitors? Because he was exposed, not contaminated. What's the difference? When he opened the container, he was instantly exposed to the radioactive material. But since he didn't actually touch it, he wasn't contaminated by it. So he can't pass it on to you or me. Is he going to survive? No, his internal organs are too badly damaged. The best thing we can do now is just try to keep him comfortable. How long does he have? If you know how to get in touch with his next of kin, you ought to be doing it. Well, we need to ask him some questions. Is there any problem with that? I'm not sure how coherent he's going to be. Well, I don't care if he's breathing his last breath. We have to find out what he knows. And we'll alert the proper agencies as to what's going on here, but we're going to need you to keep this quiet. I understand. All right? So much for wondering if this John Jim has made it into the country. About. We're trying to be as civil as we can about this, Terrell, but if you want to play hardball, we can do that, too. Personally, I think civil's highly overrated. I much prefer the hardball route. Where is the crate that you picked up down at the docks? I don't know what you're talking about. Tick-tock, Terrell! What he means is we don't have time for games. Neither do you. You thought you'd score yourself a little dope, huh? Instead, you scored some radiation. Look, man, I don't know what you're talking about. You took one look in that crate, just enough to kill you. <laughs> This ain't the flu. You're melting from the inside out. Look, it's too late for you, Terrell. But we need to find that crate before it happens to somebody else. I ain't. <coughs> you think you're in pain now? Wait till we tell him to stop the drugs. Stop it. Get out. Both of you, get out. <coughs> you okay? You want some more? <laughs> Cool. I apologize for them. But what they said is true. You're very thick. And it is because of what was in that crate. You did open it, didn't you? Terrell, I'm sorry this happened to you. If we don't find that container, a lot of innocent people are going to die. Maybe someone you even care about. 
If you gave that crate to your brother, Marcus... I didn't. Marcus ain't got nothing to do with this. I don't be hanging around him no more. I don't even know where he is. Whoever sent you to pick up that crate knew it was dangerous and didn't even care enough to warn you. No, you're wrong. So then, he did warn you about the danger. <sighs> he doesn't care anything about you, Terrell. Why would you protect a person like that? He goes by the name Abdul. He used to be Lester Ames until he converted to Islam in prison. Me and him were tight when I joined the Apostles. Terrell, where's the suitcase you picked up yesterday? That's it. That's all I know. Terrell. Just, just leave me alone. Does he know where Abdul took the crate or suitcase? He says no. Do you believe him? I don't know. What about his brother, Marcus? We wouldn't talk about him. But I wouldn't be surprised if he knows where he is. I'm going to start trying to track down Lester Ames, a.k.a. Abdul. Very good work, Miss Thomas. You make an excellent good cop to our bad cop. Good job. Are you okay? This is Jack. Thanks, we're on our way. The DC cops have just located Curtis Sanford. Thanks. Special Agent Jack Hudson. How you been keeping yourself, huh? You don't call, you don't write. Where's the love, Jackie baby? Curtis. Speaking of love, you gonna introduce us? Curtis Sanford, Sue Thomas, she works with me. If I'd have known they gave you partners that looked like this, I'd have joined the FBI myself. Our loss. Who's this, your drug sniffing dog? Go ahead, sniff away, brother. I'm as clean as she is beautiful. <laughs> I'm going legit now. Not that I wasn't before, it's just that now I'm even uh, more, more legit. legit. Uh, listen, Curtis, I'd love to sit down and catch up, but right now I'm a little strapped for time. What can you tell me about Lester Ames, a.k.a. Abdul? Not much. Me and him ain't exactly on the same social circuit these days, since he had his conversion. Do you know where he is? Here he's got his own thing going on, but I don't want no part of it. Or him. He's what you might call a, a fanatic. Yeah, we need to find him. What's going on, Jackie? All I can tell you is that if he's successful at what he's trying to do, it'll be bad for everybody's business, legitimate or not. Let me see what I can find out. Do you trust him? There are guys I trust less. That didn't answer my question. No, I don't trust him, but right now he's the best shot we've got at finding a duel. Bobby, I finally broke it. We all know how painful that can be. Break what? The security lock on Hakeem's computer. We recovered some emails. In one he sent to a recipient in Pakistan. He talked about a meeting with a third party he called Prof as a potential solution to the merger need. I thought that might be the merging of the strontium with the C4 explosive. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh. So uh, by Prof you mean Professor? I'm running a check on professors whose curriculum has anything to do with radioactivity and who could conceivably build a dirty bomb. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Good work. Hmm. Miles? Hmm? Who's who listed potential bomb makers? How you doing? They set off a firecracker. I'm all over them. ATF has already picked up three of my suspects for questioning. Righto. Would you happen to know if any of them are professors or go by the nickname or the screen name of Prof? Not so far away. Well, Tara found something in Hakeem Kadir's computer indicating that uh, someone called the Prof could be our bomb maker. Maybe we ought to have another chat with Hakeem. No, it's not going to happen. His attorney's had him moved to county. He couldn't pry his mouth open with a pneumatic jack. I wonder if this attorney knows whether or not his office is upwind or downwind from the potential bomb site. Yes, well, I actually mentioned something like that to him. He said that his client is innocent, a victim of aggressive big brother law enforcement tactics. Well, let's hope it's downwind. Connie, I can't talk now. Things are really jammed up here. Yes, I picked up the dress. I love the red bow. The bow is blue, right? But that was a trick question. 
Okay, so I haven't picked it up yet, but we're in a situation here and I couldn't get away. Right. Yeah, but... You know, I thought... I'm thinking that this might not be the best week to try and have a wedding. I can't say anymore. I'm sure the dress is going to fit me fine, okay? Just... Yeah. I gotta go. What's going on? That was my sister. Can we talk? I don't know what to do. I mean, what's been going on? I don't feel right letting my family come to town for this wedding. Can you let them know without really letting them know? Well, I, I tried to suggest that they postpone the wedding, but my sister thinks it's because I don't like her fiancé. And I don't. But that's not what this is about. I mean, now it's like she's going to go through with this stupid wedding just to spite me. And I feel like I have to tell them. But if I do, I'm not going to pass my next routine lie detector test. And I can see it now when the guy says to me, have you ever passed classified information to anyone, even your family, outside the bureau? The little pen is going to be jumping off the machine. Sue. Curtis Sanford's on his way over. He says he's got something for us. Go ahead. So this is the FBI. Nice. A little red, white, and blue for some people, I imagine, but uh, I kind of like it. We'll tell the director you approve. He'll be happy to hear that. So, Curtis, what do you have for us now that you didn't have when we left you two hours ago? What can I say? I got good sources. And they tell me something's going down tonight. Something you guys might be interested in. I'm listening. First, I got a question for you. What? Abdullah's working with terrorists, isn't he? I can't answer that. You just did. Abdul's guys are breaking into a warehouse over in Calverton to boost some explosives. C4 is what I'm hearing. Might that be the kind of information you were looking for? That's a good place to start. Do you have an address? Yeah. Do it. Do what? You look so refreshed. I mean, when I left last night for 30 minutes of tossing and turning on that incredibly uncomfortable bureau issued cot, you were here. When I got back, you were still here. Well, since the noise doesn't bother her, she probably took a bunch of catnaps all night long. Miles, that is the most. Save it. It's true. I did take catnap. Only I tell Levi they're dog nap. Right, Levi? I wish I were him. He looks so comfortable. Uh, well, before you curl up under your desk, can you do me a favor? Sure. I need an address for Olivia Henderson here in D.C. Okay. Who's Olivia Henderson? Terrell Banks' grandmother. Mm. I've been searching his file, and if anyone has a chance of getting through to him, she might be it. You know, one of the worst things about all this is... What? We're going to miss Kobe and Michael. That's one of the worst things about this to you? Well, not the worst thing, maybe, but still, with what we paid for those tickets, mate, it's right up there. Mm. You want to see us? Yeah, come in. I just got word the warehouse Curtis Sanford said was going to get hit dead. And we had SWAT out there all night. Nobody showed up. Curtis must have gotten some bad information. Maybe his connections aren't what they used to be, eh? I'm not so sure. The what was accurate. It was the where that didn't pan out. A bundle of commercial C4 was stolen last night, except it was from a construction site in Virginia. Well, I'd say the situation just went from serious to critical. Makes me wonder if Curtis is somehow involved. Is it possible he set you up as a diversion tactic? My gut says no, but finding out the answer to that question just went to the top of my to-do list. We both got played, gents, and I'm not any happier about it than you are. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt on this. Very generous of you, mate. It's more than I'd do. You think I want some crazies coming into my hood and blowing everything up? You don't think I care what happens to this country? Yeah, I'm sure you're a real patriot. A, it ain't good for business. B, I got friends in this city just like you. 
Listen, what I'm trying to say is I am offering my services to help you guys find this stuff that you're looking for. And in a situation like the one we're in, the code of ethics that your job demands might just be a liability. Whereas a freelancer like myself might not only have easier access, but how shall we say, more effective interrogation techniques? Look about your unholy alliance. The apostles and the FBI fighting side by side for the common good. Now there's a scenario. Sweet. I think I'll put it on my resume. All right, well, we don't know, we don't know. Excuse me, are you Olivia Henderson? Yes. Do you have a grandson by the name of Terrell Banks? That's right. Who are you? Sue so Thomas, I work for the FBI. I think Terrell needs you. Hi, Terrell. Someone's here to see you. Terrell? Grass. What's happening? I don't know, Grass. I didn't mean no harm. I just wanted to see what was in the crate. Are you in pain? <sighs> Give me stuff for that. I'm sorry, Chris. I wish I would have listened to you more. Terrell, where's Marcus? Is he all right? Marcus wasn't with me. I ain't seen him. Don't let them try to trick you into nothing but Marcus, Chris. Terrell. Ain't nobody trying to trick anybody. Except the man you've been working for. Who put you here? I'm not your enemy, Terrell. I'm trying to help you. If Marcus is involved with Abdul, tell us so we can help him. Terrell, baby. I can't lose you both. Marcus. They're hanging at this house. Let's go. Let's get him out of here. Yep. It's me. I want him alive, Curtis. Yeah, we're on our way. Curtis has Abdul. Where is he? He's just chilling, but he's not the answer to our problem. What do you mean? He ain't gonna talk. And believe me when I tell you, if he was going to, he would have. Yeah, well, could you possibly thaw him out and hand him over? Did he fall down the stairs? Yeah, that's right. He's got a real balance problem. Looks like he fell down a few flights. In between floors, you got nothing from him, eh? Nah, he's like all those other crazies, man. He wants to die. Thinks he's going to a big party. Abdul Farouk, you're under arrest for conspiring against the government of the United States. Yeah, not to mention the people of the hometown hood of Curtis Sanford. You pigs. I spit on all of you. Going to prison means absolutely nothing to me. Well, here's a newsflash, mate. It means even less to us. I think we've heard enough. Where's Terrell? Terrell's gone, baby. God, what are you talking about? Your brother died, Marcus. Oh. Your friend Abdul gave him a death sentence. You 
got to help them, Marcus. Terrell wanted you to help them. I ain't helping nobody. Oh. Oh. Get him out of here. Are you going to be all right? You turn up anything at Abdul's? No. Nothing at Marcus's either. No strontium, no C4. So who has it? I'd say we'd have to assume the bomb maker has it. You seem like a pretty intelligent guy to me, Abdul. Why try to kill thousands of innocent people? Only for the pure pleasure of knowing that so many infidels will suffer the fate that they deserve. And I only wish I could be there myself to watch it. Hey, so how's it going? Oh. You know, I almost believe that when they were handing out the evil gene, that this guy was fighting to get to the front of the line. What about Marcus? Anything? He still doesn't believe Terrell died from radiation. He's convinced we poisoned him. What, even after his grandmother told him otherwise? No, oh, he thinks we brainwashed her. Doesn't have to make sense with these guys, remember? Believes one thing and one thing only. Whatever Abdul says. You know, you listen to Abdul for more than 30 seconds, you start to realize the only thing he cares about is his own twisted agenda. Anything other than that, including Marcus and Terrell. Just a means to an end. Good idea, Miles. So, everyone's expendable. Right, Abdul? Well, not everyone. I'm sure Abdul feels terrible about his friend Terrell dying. Terrell is of no consequence to me. He deserved to die for opening a container that he shouldn't have. Then again, if you told him what was in that suitcase, he probably never would have opened it. He is of no consequence. I've seen enough. Kayat? Yes, Kayat. That is the name of the guy that Marcus said came by to pick up the C4. The bomb maker. We don't know for sure. Marcus just knew his name. See, Abdul didn't tell any of his guys what he was really up to. We checked for a Professor Kayat. There's none listed at any college or university in the U.S. Actually, none in North America. And none has entered on any kind of visa. What kind of name is Kayat? Turkish or Arabic? What if it actually means something else? Names of most languages have other meaning. Kayat is Arabic. English translation, Taylor. What, like the guy who hems your pants? Pants, in your case. Expertly hand-stitched suits from London and mine. So what if it's not Professor Kayat, but Professor Taylor? Probably Taylor with a Y. There are three in the D.C. area. John Taylor at Bardell, Professor of Engineering. Daniel Taylor at Georgetown, the Social Sciences and a mathematics professor named Brian Taylor at George Washington. Well, if we're right, one of them is planning a dirty bomb as we speak. Divide up. Let's hit them all. Professor Daniel Taylor. Can we have a word? Professor Brian Taylor. FBI. We need to see Professor John Taylor right away. I'm uh, afraid he's not in. Is he teaching a class? Uh, no, he's doing research this afternoon. He's gone all day. Where would we find him? I don't know. Uh, why? Is he in some sort of trouble? How long have you worked for Dr. Taylor? Not long. Why? We need to have a look inside his office. Oh, I really shouldn't let you do that. Colleen, we're dealing with national security here. It's extremely important. I guess that's okay. I mean, if you can't trust the FBI, who can you trust? Is this the professor? Yes. MPC. What's that? Um, Maryland Prison Center. Professor Taylor volunteered there as a teacher. Lester Ames, a.k.a. Abdul Farouk, did eight years at Maryland Prison Center. I think we've got our connection. Does he have a cell phone? Uh, yes. 
Lucy, it's Jack. Listen, I have a cell phone number for you, 555-0163. I need to know where it is. Find out where it's sending signal from. Oh, you guys can do that? Thanks, you've been very helpful. Yeah! Good. Good, okay, we're on our way there. Taylor's somewhere southwest of the mall. Got the signal narrowed to the Longo office complex. Lucy also found a picture of him, and she's wearing it to all units. Let's go. Come on. Look at the area. Bring it over here. Yes, Let's go. Let's go. Keep moving. Keep moving. All right. Yes, sir. Bruce it. Back over here. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. every building in this complex for your bomb, and I'm gonna ask you one more time. Where is it? You're too late. You'll never find it in time. All right, we'll see. But if we don't, you get a close-up view of your work. Where are you going? As far away as we can get. You're bluffing! Look, if this place goes up, it'll be a pile of rubble. And with the radioactive fallout, no one's gonna come anywhere near this place for years. Who's gonna know? Jack! What? You can't. Yes, I can. If he wants to die, I'm happy to grant him his wish. That's my cell phone number. If you change your mind, hit send. You're getting pretty good at that good cop, bad cop thing. You picked that one up on the fly. The question is, are you really bluffing? Save the taxpayers' cost of a lengthy trial. He'll call. What if you're wrong? I'm not. Everything's out. We gotta go, Jack. Professor just blinked. Yes! You've made a wise decision, Professor. He's between the second and third floors. Laura. How did you know? Martyrs don't use time bombs. If he really didn't care if he lived or died, he would have wired himself up and set it off. Abdul, Abdul flipped on Hakim, and Kayet flipped on everyone, including himself. Everybody's singing, it's like an opera. Music to my ears. Great job, Ms. Thomas. I'm just glad that your family is safe. 
Even if you don't like the guy, your sister's going to marry. I didn't even get a chance to tell you the wedding's been called off. You didn't tell them. No, no, I made a decision. I was going to, but I didn't have to. Donald and Connie got into a huge argument. About what? She asked him if he liked the bridesmaid dresses, and I guess he was a little too honest. He said he hated them. What did you think of them? You know, for the first time, Donald and I actually agreed on something. But you didn't tell your sister you didn't like them. <laughs> of course not. Only Donald is that dumb. <laughs> Ooh! We still have an hour to make the Wizards-Lakers game. Basketball. Oh. I don't know. It's been a, you know, a long couple of days. Maybe we should just bag it. Are you crazy? It's Michael against Kobe. Maybe for the last time ever. Does any of this ring a bell? Michael versus Kobe. He must really be tired. Yeah, no, I'm just a little out of it. Right. Maybe we should just sell the tickets. Oh, no. You didn't. What? You already did it. You sold our tickets? Well, I didn't think there was any way that we were going to be able to go. And with what we spent on those tickets, I just thought it was the prudent thing to do. Even made a nifty little profit. See, that's a man for you. The world's coming to an end. He's scalping tickets. I do not believe you did that. Oh, no. What are you doing? Somebody's got to do something. Curtis? Hey, it's Jack. Um, listen, do you think you could do me another little favor? Wizard Lakers tickets. What are my chances? Tenth row? <laughs> uh, I'll... That's great. Can I have two? Yes. We're back. Uh, uh, hang, hang on a second. Have you ever seen Michael Jordan play basketball? It's just on TV. You wanna go? Are you crazy? It's Michael versus Kobe. Curtis, better make it three. Curtis, uh, how many can you get? Oh, oh, oh. I give up. I love this game. <laughs> yes! Hey! <laughs> 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 <laughs>